stand in front of me. Adam can stand wherever is facing me. Hush, you sit and I'm not sure. Face me. Face me. Yeah. I got to pray over you. I just feel to pray over these two gentlemen. There's probably more. You know, here we are, we're asking the Holy Spirit to move, to move, to move. Well, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. And it's not just these two gentlemen. I'm just, I'm doing what the Holy Spirit's told me to do. So I'm going to pray over them. But if you need a refreshing today, you've walked in. I know they mentioned this. It's like if you're heavy, if you're heavy this morning, well, I might get you to you too, but <laughs> the Holy Spirit's here. doesn't need to have a person uh, come to you and lay hands on you. You can receive it right there where you're, you know, standing, sitting, whatever you're doing. It doesn't really even matter. All you have to do is say, okay, yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. Whatever, whatever it is that you have for me, yes, yes. Just say that right now. Just close your eyes and go, yes. Yes, Holy Spirit. You want to see a move? He's saying, will you move with me? That's what he's saying. He's saying, do you want to move? Do you want to move this morning? Nobody wants to move this morning. <laughs> I want to see the Holy Spirit move, but it requires us. He requires us. Hallelujah. He requires us. He requires us to say, yes, yes, I'm willing to move. Yes, yes, come Holy Spirit. Yes, fill me afresh, Holy Spirit. Just say that. Say, yes, Holy Spirit. If not, then don't. But I want to see God move. I want to see God move in me. I want to see God move in my family. I want to see God move in this church. I want to see God move in this city. I want to see God move in this nation. Amen? It takes us saying, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Okay, you two boys, the Fulfords, come up here. Yeah, Ashton, Ethan. And sometimes we just got to get some stuff off of us first. So maybe just shake those hands and go, ah, get that off me, get that off me. Even you young guys, I don't know, just, just go like this. And it's like, you know, when, when, when a bug tries to attack you, you go, ah, get that off. Sometimes we just got to do that, get that off. Because you got to get that off first for the Holy Spirit to be able to go, oh, okay, there you are, you're free. You're free of that, that debris, that whatever that is. So you just make a decision right now. No, I'm free. I want what the Holy Spirit wants for me. Some of you are still a little reluctant, going, oh, boy, what does that mean? What does that look like, right? Because I know I was a kid myself once. It's like, oh, do I have to go to the ends of the earth to Africa? Seriously, I thought that. I thought, oh boy, if I give my heart to the Lord, I'm going to have to go to Africa and die on the mission field. Can you believe that? I thought that. But you see, I'm still here today. <laughs> Didn't die on the mission field. Whatever God has for you, whatever he has for you, you're thinking, oh, I'm just like a teenager. I'm like, whatever. No. Actually, I have something for you. I forgot it at home. Because you've got hands that create, right? very artistic. I've seen some of you. Is it you? It's you, yeah. I forgot it at home. So I have to remember to bring it. Because I thought of you. The Holy Spirit reminded me of you when I went through this place. And I thought of you. Weird, hey? <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to bring it because it's, it's a, a, an artist. And I thought of you. And I thought, man, God's, God's put stuff on the inside of you that's just for you. Yeah, like your brother doesn't have the same talent, does he? No, but you've got something else that God's given you. And it's not the same. And that's okay, because that's how he made you. He made you special, he made you special, he made Adam special, he made all of us special and unique. So whatever he has, all he says is, are you willing to give it back to me and use it for me and for my glory? That's what he's saying. So even with you... It's like those hands are anointed hands. Whatever it is he's placed on the inside of you, it's, it's anointed because he's placed it there. It wasn't by mistake that he made you the way that you are. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not a mistake. It's just how you are. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Adam too, wow. Like, wow. He's created you 
pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool guy. <laughs> and you know what? That's what it takes. It's, it takes us to go, sure, because he did. Sometimes we, we doubt that. We doubt who we are. We doubt that. But God's placed those things on the inside. And sometimes we wonder, oh boy, you know, where are we going with that which he's placed on the inside of us? And even when you don't know, it's like that song, sing a hallelujah. Just go, oh Lord Jesus, you know, I just thank you. I praise you for, for what you've placed on the inside. Because it's about him. It's about him, amen? It's about him. So Father, I just thank you. Thank you for the giftings and the callings that you've placed on the inside. That Father, right now, that fire, that fire of the Holy Ghost, that fire, that fire. Yeah, just bring it forth. Bring it forth. Bring it forth. Bring it forth. From the beginning, from the beginning, from the beginning. From the beginning, I've created you. I've placed things on the inside that are just there for you. For my glory. For my glory. As you continue to set yourself in that place where you hear me, I'll continue to tell you exactly what to do. One step forward. Maybe it seems like it's five steps backwards, but you're moving forward. You're moving forward. You're moving forward. So just relax. Rest in me, says the Lord. Take that time to hear. Take that time. Take that time. Take that time. You'll be refreshed. You'll be restored. You'll have the clarity that's needed in every situation. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put your hands like this. Let's get them ready to to receive. Let's receive that in the name of Jesus. Your presence from the top of his head to the bottom of his toe. In Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. name. Father, I just thank you for your touch. Thank you for your presence. Your presence, your presence, your presence. Just overwhelm. 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 Yeah, you shall all those things. Yes. Yes. Peace, 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 peace. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, you just speak with me. You just speak with me. And he hears you clearly. Yeah. Yeah. When you take the time to listen. When you take the time to listen, sometimes you think, oh, I don't know, where are you, God? He says. And he's talking all the time to you. All the time, all the time, all the time. Hallelujah. Oh, we are here. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come. 
Thank you, Lord. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. There's such a sweet anointing. You know, we we can't minister without the anointing. Sometimes I come up here with a yellow sticky with three scriptures, and, and they tell me I, I speak too long sometimes. <laughs> but um, it's because of what the Holy Ghost brings things back to remembrance. Welcome to those of you that are online today. I, I believe you're going to receive, I believe that same anointing that is in this place right now, and it's going to increase week after week after week, because we're heading into the last of the last days. I believe that you're going to sense it where you are. In fact, uh, hallelujah, if you are sick or if there's anything, we're going to pray for you later, and uh, um, you're just going to put your hand on yourself, or if there's a family member, you put your hand on it. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick, and they might recover thank you they shall recover amen hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah thank you father god well i want to continue again with uh we started last week with just a simple series and if you you get to follow me on wednesdays too and i know there's thousands of preachers that you can listen to on wednesday i, I do a program at 11 o'clock and hey, if I'm your pastor, then take a listen. Because we're here to help. Amen? Consider me a friend. There's a movie where the little kid points to, the, points to this man and says, Stranger, stranger, I'm a friend, okay? I'm here to help. And what we share today, it reminds me so much of, um, of uh, we had a, a praise and worship leader at one time who um, bought a brand new Honda. And uh, that Honda was dead after, what was it, 24,000 clicks because he never changed. Was it 40? Oh, my goodness. Because he never changed the oil in the unit. And I remember him coming out of my office with tears in his eyes. He said, it's, you have to replace it. And so there's things that we need to know for your spiritual walk right now that I'm going to, I want to open your eyes again. If you were here last week, we were, we, uh, we, we want to del del delve into the other realm. What's happening in the other realm uh, right now? There's more angels in this place than there are peeps. Friends, peeps, right? People. There's, there's, there's a, a, a moving. The Bible talks about angels being uh, close to you, and um, everybody has a guardian angel, and children have angels around them that you don't mess with a child because they report right to God. And so last week I talked about how God got on the clay and he, when he formed man and he breathed into him the breath of life. And, and uh, man became, what does the Bible say? A living soul. But going back a little, doing a little bit more digging, uh, it should have been and, and can be, you can add to it without violating the word of God. You became a talking spirit. And so what you do, what I, what's happening right now, your spirit is a real you. I am, and you are, a spirit being having a temporary uh, earthly experience. 
In fact, if all the sand was collected and one grain would represent your 120 years on this planet, the rest is eternity. And, it, and, it, and it's way too short because you'll never die. Nobody ever dies. Amen. Everybody lives in a location forever. And so right now, we got, you know, 120 years. If, the, if we, we can, you know, and eat healthy. Hey, I start my days, you know, with an oil change every day. Uh, well, I got my wife involved in that too right now. We do a, a whole lemon with peel, with garlic, and uh, apple cider vinegar. Why? Because I know behind the scenes what's inside of me to keep this temple going. I, I, I got to do stuff. Because we slopped down a lot of burgers at one time and french fries and that. And so it's time to clean her up a little bit and eat properly. And uh, so in the spirit realm, I want to know what's going on. I want to know when the Bible says I'm a talking spirit, what in the world is it talking about? Amen? Because uh, God wants us to be more than conquerors through him that loved us. So we want to know. We want to get the mechanics right of of uh, this life. And there's so many scriptures. I'm not going to try to repeat everything that we shared last week. But um, there's a man, a minister, that uh, as he stood before Jesus, Jesus said this to him. Two things are important um, and to work on. It is watch your mouth because you are a prophet of your own life. You just ain't going to get your healing if you're going to complain and say, you know, it's just not working or I'm sick all the time or, or you know, uh, I get what grandma has and all that. It's just not going to do, you're just not going to get well or maintain it. You may get well by somebody laying hands on you, but you can't maintain it and, and you'll, you'll lose it again because you are a, a prophet of your own life. And so he said, the Lord says, get your words right and also pray in the spirit. Pray, pray, pray in the Spirit. That's, we won't be discussing that today, but praying in the Holy Ghost. If you've uh, done it for five minutes or three minutes, maybe, maybe it, and it feels like my mind is all over the place, just keep pressing through. Keep pressing through because the devil attacks two things, the two T's, tithing and tongues. He, he just don't want you to do that. You know, he just wants, he wants to take that away from you. And that, it bugs him because uh, he can't understand What's, uh, what's going on when you pray in the Spirit and the Lord's going to drop information down into you uh, that is pertinent to uh, you moving ahead and so forth. So I want to encourage you because I don't know where you're all at uh, concerning praying in the Spirit, but it's huge. But first of all, what we're addressing today is that you're a talking spirit. And we talked about Jericho the other week, where, uh, last week, where um, they were supposed to keep their mouth shut for six days and the seventh day they were supposed to start Shouting and praising God. So for six days they were supposed to what? Not murmur, not complain. Because these were the kids of all the parents that died in the wilderness. These were the kids. They're walking around and they had, they had to have a choice. Now they saw, they buried their parents. Their parents stinketh in the wilderness. Because as, as um, 1 Corinthians 10.10 10 says, they were grumbling, complaining so much. And every time... Uh, they wanted to get back to Egypt. And God says, I want this promised land for you. They said, we want Egypt. Every time there was a difficulty. And so we want to make sure that, that um, and again, every one of these stories hints strongly to watch our mouth. Amen? Not just don't swear, you know, all that kind of stuff. It is, you, and in fact, I said this here, that the Father God and Jesus have never had idle words that, or wasted words Every word, whether it's speaking to that fig tree, it was there to produce. And in, in the case of the fig tree, it, was, it, it, it shriveled up and died. In the case of, of uh, the centurion, remember he was, Jesus was over at that wall. The centurion was over there coming towards him. And he says, uh, you know, don't have, you don't have to come any closer. You don't need to come to my house. It could have been a mile down the road. But this is so important that when Jesus opened his mouth, and get, remember, we're imitators of God. When Jesus opened his mouth, words came out that floated through the air. And the Jews believe that, that every word is a container full of something. So I want to fill mine with good. I refuse. And again, I've got to tell myself because there's a part of me that wants to complain sometimes. Anybody with me on that? So Jesus is over here. The centurion is there. His house might be over where 
Mike's shiny black truck is, and he's like, like, uh, no, don't come any closer. You know, just, just say the words. I know what happens when you release words. Jesus, I know who you are. So he, he did investigate it. Uh, you know, he looked in the newspaper and he found Jesus is coming to town. And he says, I know who you are. I know what you do. When you release words from your mouth, it is like me. Uh, I, I'm under authority, he says. There's a guy over me that tells me, you know, take out the garbage or do this over there. Or uh, in the case of being a soldier, you know, cut that guy's head off or, you know, whatever. So there's someone over. And he relates Jesus releasing words from his mouth as as basically a command going through the air and healing. Didn't even know the guy's name. The, he just said, my, my servant is lying um, there and he's, he's, um, he's ill. And so those words went through the air and healed. Amen? And guess what? I mean, that's what we did. There's people that have received healing. Oh, yeah. It was so wonderful. I, I wanted to start out with this testimony too. He fits right in here. We used to have a bus ministry, and uh, we had some wonderful kids coming on that bus. And I was just reminded this morning, and for, for let, this, let, this be, let these words that are going to come to you right now fill your heart. Because we had this, these two sisters that came on that bus. There was, there was close to, Mike, was it 100 kids that came? Close to 100 kids. Yeah. And we actually then we switched it to Saturdays and so forth. Um, it was wonderful. And these two girls came, and the one girl had, uh, that week, she was going to have open heart surgery. A teenager, s sliced open from here to there. And so she came forward, and I want to encourage you. See, these words are going to go into your heart. Maybe you don't believe in healing or haven't been healed or waiting on healing or whatever. I want you to take heart that in the spirit world, we're releasing words right now, and that's going to encourage. The Bible says you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words this, of testimonies. And so um, hands were laid on her. I don't even know who prayed or whatever, but the girl came back the very next week. such a baby sometimes but that's good hey man she came back next week with an x-ray and he said we couldn't find any reason it was all gone a teenage girl what if we would have never started that bus ministry what if we would have quit or you know just like and, and we we had to let it go because there's the inspections and stuff like that caused it but we did we sold all the children into another ministry uh, and so we did an honorable thing to do that but uh, there, there's also another testimony I want to share of a man who had a vision. The, the, this couple had a son, and the son was a orangutan, and he hadn't been in church for two years. He was just causing them a lot of trouble. All these different things were going on in this son's life. And they, they uh, finally, the Lord got a hold of them. And uh, praise God for open-eyed visions. Praise, praise God for, for dreams. The Bible talks about that. You can have that. Amen. And don't call, don't ask for it, but just, you know, just keep yourself open if the Lord does that. And so he was brought into the heavens and he stood there and the Lord opened the book. There's books in there, uh, uh, many different books about your life and so forth. And there's a book about his son, this orangutan son. And words were recorded about this boy. Here's what you and your wife were saying around the coffee table about this orangutan son. That's not what the angel called him. But here's the words that you spoke. Oh, he's not going to come home. No, he's not going to go to church. Oh, blah, 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 blah. On and on. He's just always mean and this and that. And uh, he rep when he saw that, he repented of his sins, of literally binding his, his son. He was binding his own son and didn't realize it. And it was a week or two later, the boy came home and went to church. You know, it was wonderful. And so some of these examples that, that uh, they, just, they just never leave you. You just, you just know, like, wait a minute, I can clean it up. I can, uh, I can do better because Proverbs says um, life, uh, actually says death first, it does. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And you're going to eat either one of them, death and it starts out with death, actually. We actually heard somebody share that this week and said, we've got to look that up. I thought it was life and death. But it's death. Death. You could be killing 
uh, you know, relationships or family or, or your health or whatever. You know, you're not going to, oh, we're going to get that too. You're not going to get it. Hush! It's not coming on you. No! You know, but long life shall he satisfy you. Amen? And so death and life are in the power of tongue. You're going to eat the fruit of what you're saying. That's why in the 141st Psalm, verse 3, it's, as David says, guard your mouth. Put a guard on it. He knew, uh, as I shared last week too, he knew. Remember David? King David. Very strong, very wonderful, all that. And so he kills the lion, the bear, and all that kind of stuff. Then uh, something happened, and he kind of blew a fuse, and he's running away from Saul, and he's hiding out. He's, he's um, acting, the Bible says he's acting like a lunatic. He's acting crazy. He's scribbling on a door uh, of, uh, you know, just acting crazy in front of another king. And the king says, who's this crazy guy? It was the king, King David. And so from there, King David goes into a cave and he turns. He makes a decision to turn and he says, he, he became a commander of 400 men that were troubled people, the Bible says. And what did he do in that cave? Somewhere in between there, he did the 141st Psalm, verse 3, and he chose not to grumble and complain and act crazy and scribble anymore. He became a leader of, 140, uh, of uh, 400 men, and this is what he said. He, he wrote Psalm 34. So thank God. God can get a hold of all of us, right? And he, said, he wrote down, This is a day that the Lord has made. 400 guys, huh? I thought you were just scribbling and, and slobbering in your beard. He said, oh, it's a new day. This is a day the Lord has made. This is what's going to come out of my mouth. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. Enough of that stuff before. It's going to be good now. Amen. Hallelujah. So you've got to see in the spirit world, there's a correlation between angels. Um, let's go to Daniel chapter 10. There, so the, all these angels were sent. But did you know they'll just stand back there and do nothing? If you're going to say, you know what? Like the one lady uh, that talked to me one time, she says, things happen to me in threes, always threes. So she listed three car accidents that happened in about a three, four-month period. Terrible things. Not fours, but threes. And guess what? The angel has to like, she's a commander. She's, got, she's a talking spirit. She does what she wants to. And instead of saying, bless the Lord at all times, you know, there's safety. The Bible says, uh, no, um, um, what is that scripture? Where, uh, he, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I'll come to it in a second. Where it says uh, that uh, the dwelling place. No, no, that, yeah, that's Psalm 91. But where it where, um, talks about uh, wherever you are, the place, he protects you. Anyways, let's go back to Daniel chapter 10, uh, where you know, Daniel was always a righteous guy, and he's, um, what has he got here? Uh, he's got trouble. He says, uh, there's trouble, trouble, trouble. In, in that day, I, Daniel, verse 2, of oh, chapter 10, was mourning for three whole weeks. I ate no pleasant or desirable food, nor did any meat or wine come into my mouth, and I did not anoint myself at all, for the full three weeks. So he's going, he's going before the Lord. And what happens? The Lord shows up. An angel shows up in a vision and starts talking to him. But for today's purpose, I'm not going to get into what the angel said. What I want to do here is go down, down to verse 11. And the angel said to me, O Daniel, you greatly beloved man, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for to you I am now sent. Hmm. Is he sent to everybody? Specifically, in this case, there was a release of this special angel for Daniel. Okay? So now we all have, have min, uh, ministering spirits around us. But especially in this case, I am now sent. Why were you sent, Mr. Angel? That's a good question. Why are they sent today to you and me? That, that's what I want to know. Why is this guy sent? Because Daniel 
did something. And while he was saying the word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your mind and your heart and understanding to humble yourself before your God, your words, words were heard. I'm going to give you a book today. Don't leave home without it here. Your words were heard. And I have come in consequence of your words. So here we have the correlation of what happens when the right, I'm going to say it again, the right words. God, uh, God wants the right words to be released from your mouth. So he can send that angel for that special assignment. In da Daniel's case, maybe a word or whatever it is. But I, gu I guarantee you Daniel was not complaining or grumbling. He was, whatever he was releasing as a talking spirit out there, released the angels down to do the bidding of God. That's what they do. That's what uh, the Bible says in um, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 7 and 14. It talks about, are they not all ministering spirits sent to those that are heirs of salvation? They are. Yes, they are. They are ministering spirits sent. Uh, go with me to the 103rd Psalm so we see that. So you can see mechanically you don't want to go without an oil change. Spiritually you don't. Uh, 103rd Psalm. Verse 20. Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord. You his angels, you mighty ones who do the commandments the, and hearkening to the voice of of his word. Well, the Bible has been completed. What hearkening, what voice are they hearing so that they can be released, so that they can do what they need to do? It is our voice they hear. They hear the word of God coming over our lips so that they can be motivated in the spirit realm. And you want them to be motivated uh, in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And so uh, we also covered, uh, and <laughs> we're not going to get very far. It's uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse, sword of the Spirit. Tell me if he's up there, if he got it up there. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6. Th this really uh, was so important. It is important. Again, what, what would you do if somebody gave you a precious sword? Would you drag it through the mud? Would you cut your toes with it? Or would you keep it in, it's, it, what is it, a sheave or whatever, and keep it, take it out only to view and to sharpen it and, and use it only for the specific purpose for which it was intended? In, in the 10th verse, uh, let's go down. Uh, therefore... Yes, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword, the spirit wields, which is the word of God. So there again is the complete, this is what Daniel did. That's what pulled the angel down to work for him or whatever he needed, the message. And so you just can't, you're, you're in a box here. You can't, you can't say anything dumb anymore because it says the sword, the spirit wields, which is the word of God. Well, we don't know if that cancer is from God or is it? No, 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 no. You find me one scripture where God makes people sick. You know, find me a place where this and this, where God makes people poor, where God hurts people, where God, no, count it all joy. It's always joy. It's always all these exciting things that God wants. So I want to release. Wielding simply means be a skillf skillful technician your brain surgeon wields the knife hopefully he doesn't have sh you know the shakes as he's cutting away or whatever hopefully he, or your dentist <laughs> hopefully he doesn't you know grind the, the wrong tooth he wields he's skilled he's got information for years that he's now using with his hands and therefore um, they can go in there and someone you know someone's watching that that they are patting 
you know, they, they pat his brow. So all he does is he concentrates as he wields. This is exactly what God wants you to do, to wield skillfully uh, the word of God. Amen? The Bible says in the 29th verse of uh, chapter 4, let no, say no, absolutely none, no foul and or polluted language, nor evil words, or nor unwholesome or worthless talk, ever, say ever. So there's a dimension. First, wield, it's with skill, and it's the word of God. Ever means ever. In Greek and Hebrew, just don't ever let it happen. And again, we, you know, we make mistakes and so forth, but don't ever let it happen. You're wielding the sword skillfully. And I like what the, again, if you don't have an Amplified by one, uh, it says, nor evil words, that no foul or polluted language, nor evil words. And we know from the story of the 10 spies that evil words were spoken even though they saw giants, even though they saw the big grapes and so forth, they still chose to come back and t pollute. They polluted millions of people, got an insurrection going, a riot against, you know, Moses and all that kind of stuff. No, we can't, you know, um, the leader at the time. No, we can't take this land. It's impossible. We can't do it. Just can't do it. No, no, no. We can't do it. And what they are really saying, uh, we, uh, Pastor Anna looked this up and one time, says, God, we don't trust you, is what that scripture brings out. We don't trust you. We, uh, we saw the grapes. We heard what you said. We, 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 we read it in the Bible, this and this and that, that all the promises were given. But you don't understand our situation. You don't understand gas is now 188, right? You know, you don't understand... Uh, what Costco's charging for sardines, you know. You don't understand God. Really, that's what we're trying to tell them. Every time we worry, every time we, we do that, we're saying, God, we don't trust you. Words coming out of our mouth because it's mind, mouth, heart. Remember, we can't, we don't trust you is really what you're saying. So why not just go like, you know, stand in front of the Titanic and go like this here. Hmm. Just, whoo, breathe it all in. Amen. Just, oh, yeah. God, we're, yeah, inflation, oh, yeah, praise God, we're going through. Because you said we're going through. You said you'd take care of us. Yeah, yeah, mm, this is so good, yes. No, I don't see food tomorrow. No, uh, yes, but hallelujah, you still have Raven Express. Remember those birds when a prophet? Yes, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to close with that today. I could go much further, but uh, that's enough information for you to understand that our words are important. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're activating angels. See, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, do not neglect so great a salvation. Do not neglect it. Don't, don't just like, oh, that's, that's one of them word messages again. You know, like, do the oil change in your car. Do the lemon thing in the morning. Do it. Don't, don't wait and, until it's too late. Do the thing. You know, like, I don't know how many people are, oh, my kids, they're running away. Oh, they're just this kind of stuff. I'm just not going to agree. You want to gossip about someone? I want, I want to train myself to walk out of the room. Have you heard? Oh, yeah, so-and-so, you know, just pff, taking drugs or whatever, you know. Just, I, hey, have you prayed for them? That includes our prime minister. We had a conversation with somebody yesterday. And uh, it was like, and we realized, no, no, have we prayed for this man? He needs to get born again. Amen? God's got, can squeeze that heart. God can write on, on the parliament building like he did with Nebuchadnezzar and have him turn his face to the wall and, and give him a few more years and if he repents and so forth, right? So let's, we, we just have nothing to lose when we do it God's ways. Amen. Wield the sword of the spirit with skill. Which is. Say this with me. Which is the word of God. Which is the word of God. So on every situation. That's your final. You know. Is this your final answer? Absolutely. It's the final answer. 
I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, again, we thank you, thank you, thank you for the word. And we don't take it lightly. We don't take it um, with, with uh, disdain and just, just, oh, you know, we've heard this before. No, we're doers of the word of God. I take this as my life depends on it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. And if you're here uh, and look, looking online, you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Romans 10, 9 and 10, another confession. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So let's all do this. Say, Jesus, say this with me. Be the Lord of my life. I believe you died on a cross and you rose again. And I now confess you as my Lord and Savior. I would desire to live for you all the days of my life. Amen. And if it's the first time you've prayed that, please call us at 250-862-3044. We'd love to pray with you further and give you material and send you on your way. And find a good church to go to if you're not in this town or come to this one here or uh, you know, find another great church that preaches the word of God. God bless you and have an amazing day. Ah, we're going to, uh, let's say this here in closing.